We really need to have more dating sim visual novels that have horrific things happening with its main characters and heroines. I love the cuteness of the nurse love games, but even more so when they got insanely dark during their bad endings, when the character and heroines tread into psychopath territory. What we're playing today is a game that is completely upfront about that aspect. Sure, there is some pull from the fact that the main character is gender neutral, but from the get-go on the game summary, it tells you things get really dark before it's over, and that's what got me interested. Let's dive right in. Here is my review of True Colors, A Date with Deception for the Nintendo Switch. In True Colors, you play as a gender neutral character that works in an office job. Normally a loner, you branch out and begin getting to know one of the three new hires the company just brought onto the team, leading to much more than a single weekend hangout session. The story then goes as you get to know them and spend time with them before disaster strikes, making you and your relationship struggle to stay afloat. Now as a story, I think the more romantic bits and early part of the routes are alright. The game does a good job of showing each character's quirk and backstory, like Ash's struggle with identity and being non-binary, and what drives Brianna to go out of her way to help as many people as she can with pet shelters and charities. What's really good is how uncomfortable it is and how it deals with its dark and insane events. In each route, something bad happens as you get closer to your chosen character. This event actually happens when you're halfway into the route, offering not only a huge and crazy twist, but also has the part two of each route an arc of dealing with the aftermath of said event. It'll also happen in a way you will not expect. I went in with the mindset of Doki Doki Literature Club or the Nurse Love Games, and it did not happen in the way I expected, to a very disturbing and uncomfortable degree. This game also has multiple endings for each character, so you can do dialogue choices to either manage to get through and survive the halfway point, or you get one of those bad endings. I would often go back to see the different routes, as most bad endings in these sorts of VNs are pretty entertaining to see. Though with this game, I'd really call it a more uncomfortable read than an entertaining one. And I say read because this game doesn't really have voice acting. We have some little bland English lines for the atmosphere of scenes as they switch characters, but none of the actual script is voiced. Before going past the story section, let's also talk about the gender politics and inclusion aspect to this game. If you're not into the whole gender identity thing in your games and just want to see the story, it's really just Ash's route that deals with that. Their arc is mostly about being non-binary and becoming comfortable with that, plus a few scenes about pronouns, at least in the first half of their arc. But when I went through Brianna's route, it didn't really touch on it at all. While it is true that the protagonist is designed to be gender neutral, the story never really calls attention to it. It's just there as a design choice for the player. When it comes to gameplay, this is a visual novel dating sim with dialogue choices. As you play, you'll go through story scenes and make choices to get onto routes and get different endings. As you'd expect, it's pretty much VN 101. When you play the game, you just navigate through story scenes with the basic skip and auto advance features. Though there is one thing I kind of like that they put in here. Instead of having a story log you can cycle through to look at anything you missed, you can just tap the L button to use the back option to return to a previous dialogue bit. It even lets you go from before choices pop up. While I'm not sure this is better than a log you can cycle through and skip to, it's a nice convenience if the auto advance goes faster than you can read. Speaking of choices, you get your typical VN dialogue options. You only get about four or five sets per route, but they're pretty easy to figure out. There's pretty much no common route here. You're just introduced to the three characters and get a who should I spend time with choice that solidifies what route you go on. Some of the later choices are tricky, especially in the darker events, but it's an easy save and retry if you get a bad end and the game is over early. It's a good flow, especially from a story perspective. I was expecting something like Nurse Love Games where the crazy thing happens as a cliffhanger ending, not as a mid-story event that they have to work through after the fact. But I will point out that this is very clearly a low-budget VN from a developer that hasn't made a lot of games in the genre. The art style, many of the features built into it, and to its kind of normal or casual way the characters talk in the early parts of the game. Doesn't make it bad at all, but you can always tell when you're playing, for lack of a better term, an indie VN. So I will nitpick two things here. First, VNs normally give you a surplus of save slots, and this game gives you an amount that's fine, but not optimal for what I personally do. You get 18 save slots total, essentially six per route. And this is fine, though I typically will have saves all over VNs to grab for footage. This setup is essentially just for dialogue choices. 
Like I said, it's fine. It's just way less than you'd normally get out of the genre. Second, there's a weird way this game's skip dialogue function works. In a typical VN, it'll skip any dialogue you have read. But in this game, it only skips dialogue that your current save file has read and in that session. I first noticed this when I was trying to skip some scenes in Brianna's route that were mostly a retread of an event that also happened in Ash's route, but it wouldn't let me. You can skip the intro before you go onto a route and pretty much nothing else. I even went back to a save file I had in Ash's route after I'd already completed the route with all endings and it wouldn't let me skip anything. Unless you allow the game to skip unread text, it thinks all text you haven't actively seen and rewound in that gaming session is still unread. But moving on, let's get to content and length. You're gonna spend an all right amount of time here. I went through the Ash and Brianna routes and completed those in around five hours. Though I will admit I was kind of speed reading and flying through the dialogue in Brianna's. So I'd say each route is a good four hours or so with auto advance. Not bad for a $14 game. Next up is presentation. Visually, I think the game looks good. It's got a lower budget art style, but it still looks good for what it is. The art is consistent and we've still got a few CGs thrown in here and there for emphasis. Just don't expect the ultra detailed CGs or moving renders of the bigger name visual novels. Performance is good as well, no frame weirdness or crashing, but there is a bit of a weird effect that happens on the title screen. If you sit on the title screen for even as little as 25 seconds, the music will abruptly stop and almost the entire screen will fade to black and then restart again, as if it were just looping a 25 second video. Let's get into battery life. True Colors gives the original and light models a range of about three and a half to five hours, while the V2 and OLED models get six to seven hours. In conclusion, True Colors is a very different visual novel, even going by the standards of the dating sims that typically go dark. Now the downside, the game is fairly low budget with virtually no voice acting and limited save slots, and it is a fairly short adventure with each route barely using up four hours of your time. But if you like dark twists and turns to your VNs, you will never expect what actually happens at the midway point, and from there it gets real uncomfortable in an interesting story way. Reviews to go rates True Colors, A Date with Deception for the Nintendo Switch, a 7 out of 10. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below. Thank you for watching and have a great day.